Welcome to Bahati Life YouTube with Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life Apothecary. Hello my loves, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Jessica Alexandria. I'm the creator and I'm the head witch behind Bahati Life Apothecary, professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. Thank you so much for hanging out with me once again if you're an old friend to me and the Bahati Vibe family. We need to talk about this new moon in Virgo because there are a lot of things going on. I did try to talk about it in this week's Astro Chat Live. For those of you guys that don't know, Astro Chat Live is the time where we all come together once a week on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the YouTube channel. And we talk about the full um, astrological breakdown for the week ahead. So if you don't know about that, there's that for you. So feel free to subscribe and set your alarm, your time, your timer for that. Um, I did try to talk about it this week, but I'm telling you, and you guys were kind of feeling the same energy too, this week was weird. Starting off this week was a little weird. It was a little hazy. I was definitely feeling it. I ended up getting a taco at, right afterwards and I felt so much better, which, you know, sometimes you just need a taco. Like sometimes you just need a, a, a taco. It was delicious, by the way. We, we checked out a new spot. But my attempt is to come on here and not only talk about the new moon, but also talk about some of the things that are going to be influencing that new moon and the energies this week, specifically Uranus. <laughs> Looking at you, Uranus, the planet of surprise and unexpected developments and how they're going to be impacting us, not only for the new moon, which is going to be happening on the 27th, but for the remainder of the year and following into next year. So before I dive into this, you guys, I have a question. I have a question for you. If you are a super sensitive, empathetic, empathic, that's the word, or highly gifted human being or individual, do you, how do you feel when you A, go to the gym, and B, if you don't go to the gym, what about the gym turns you off? And if you've ever gone into the gym, how did it make you feel? So maybe C and A are the same question. Basically, what is your vibe? I have this theory, right? Because per, on a personal note, I've been working out, but I have this theory that sensitive empaths, highly gifted individuals, we might have a tough time in the gym. And I was thinking, why is that? Like, why is that? And then I started thinking, I think it has something to do with the supplements people are taking, how everyone is focused in their mind. So they're, they're having an intention that they set for their workout. They're listening to certain music that either pumping them up or, you know, whatever it is. Like there's a specific type of music that you listen to when you're in the gym that's kind of like chanting like a mantra and they're focused and all the energy things that they're taking and all of that in one area and all of these metal things and like working maneuver, I just literally was thinking, I'm like, I feel like sensitive and empaths might have a difficult time in the gym. I know I did, personally I did. So I just wanna know down in the comments, please guys, <laughs> just for my own personal research. And if you love the gym, where is your Mars? Or if you, how do you like to entertain like physical activity? If you love the gym, where's your Mars, where's your sun and where's your moon? Just let me know in the comments, you guys. I'm gonna be scrolling through because you guys know I'm on this endless pursuit of astrological knowledge till the day I die. If you saw my chart, you would understand why, but I just love astrology. I love challenging myself. I love chal challenging my growth. I've been studying astrology damn near my entire life, as you guys know. So anyways, so just let me know down in the comments. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Let's get serious. <laughs> let's get super serious. So we're gonna do an astrological superset right now. <laughs> so the new moon that's happening the sign of Virgo, this is going to be happening on the 27th. If you see me looking down, it's because my laptop is actually underneath my computer. So we have a new setup here in the new office, but so the new moon is happening on the 27th of August. I have the chart pulled up for 2.22 AM. The, the sun and the moon obviously are in almost exact conjunction, but it's not perfect. I do believe that this new moon is going to happen a little after 2.22 AM, but as you guys know, I pull the astrological chart based upon my my feelings, and I usually kind of give like a general gist of it. So if you want specifics, I'll link um, those details, time, everything down below. The things that are standing out to me though during this new moon, of course, clearly, is the fact that it's happening with sign of Virgo. Virgo, as we all know, is the sign of perfection. It's a sign of nutrition. It's the sign of discernment. It's the sign of being specifically very picky about what we 
are taking in what we are absorbing what we have in our energy and also what's in our space virgo energy regardless of what your sun moon or uh, rising sign is virgo energy somewhere within your chart wants things to be at a higher the highest level of main, not main, maintenance but the ability to maintain something that is healthy that is going to be good for you something that feels nutritious and wholesome for you for your body this could be how you approach your relationships this could be how your your spiritual hygiene this could be your actual physical hygiene it's how you talk to yourself it's your interpersonal relationships with your family and your friends it all depends based upon where virgo falls within your chart so i want to hear if you would like to share what does virgo rule within your chart because this is the area of your of your life that's not going to get lit up but that the ener this energy is going to be bleeding into, that it's going to not be exposed, but something that you want to see, that you want to look at, and, and maybe even set intentions if you're like me, someone who works with magic, works with candles, works with your angels, your guides, the divine, in order to manifest my specific you know, desires for my life or your specific desires for your life. The problem that I'm kind of seeing with this new moon is the fact that it's going to be squaring off with Mars and also Uranus, the planet of unexpected developments and surprises, is squaring off with Saturn, the planet that rules restrict restrictions, rules, regulations, government, businesses, policies, right? The crazy fucking thing, pardon my French, about these planets right now is the inter exchange that's happening within the planets. If you guys hear any noise in the background, it's my Nova girl. She looks like she's trying to get comfortable. So Saturn loves r structure, it loves routine, it loves regulations, it wants you to be stable, it wants things to be stable for the long haul, it doesn't like things being uprooted and switched up. Saturn is currently transiting through Aquarius, which is all about rebellion, which is all about thinking ahead, thinking light years ahead in order of what's going to be for the good for humanity. As Nova, are you serious? No, do not touch that. Go. She's like, now's a great time. Speaking of, we were talking about this. Sit down. Sit down. You guys are getting serious dog mom right now. Sit down. One of the days we were talking about divine masculine and paper towel toilets, and she comes in here and trying to rearrange the paper towels, which I didn't even know I had paper towels in here, which it does, I guess that does make sense because I am cleaning and I use paper towels in order to windex my windows. If you know, you know, right? But <laughs> back to the chart. So, yeah, dude, um, Saturn sitting in the sign of Aquarius, this is like trying to break down the rebellion, trying to control the rebellion. How do you do that? You don't right? Then we have Uranus, which naturally rules Aquarius, transiting through Taurus, who loves things, for the most part, status quo, doesn't like things to be disrupted, doesn't like things getting pulled up. When things start changing and shifting for Taurus energy, the Taurus is like, wait, no, I liked it the way that it was. And here we are, Uranus, the planet that's kind of like a lightning bolt, literally a lightning bolt, sitting in the sign of Taurus, when Taurus is like, uh-uh, don't touch anything, we like it the way that it is. So when these two planets are clashing and then we have Mars, which rules our drive, our ambition, how we go about pursuing things, directly squaring this new moon, we have this intense clashing in the cosmic skies that's creating ridiculous amount of tension here on Earth, in your personal life, in, your, in the government, and businesses. It's interesting because at the time of me filming this right now, maybe two hours ago, maybe an hour and a half ago, the President of the United States announced that he was going to cancel student loans. This is going to, like, and I'm gonna say this, um, it's things that are unexpected, right? There are things that we might be talking about, but do we see it? When do we see it? How do we see it? And what happens when we see it? So when I'm talking about astrology, I'm talking about facts only, guys. Like, I'm not putting in my opinion into any of this. You guys don't even know my political affiliation. You understand my practice, but there's a lot of things about me that I would never put onto my YouTube channel because I'm not trying to sway you to think persuade you to think anything other than what you already believe. This is your journey. Whatever your journey is, whatever you believe, that's yours. However, I will say, looking at the astrological charts, whether you agree with this or not, or how this impacts it, it, you or doesn't, or you know, it, it's going to impact all of us, 
there's there's going to be a disruptive reaction to this there's going to be good and bad for some of you guys are like well how could this be bad or how could this be good you're about to find out so it's about the, the way the planets are there's this push pull when it comes to trying to do what is the best for humanity for the collective for this for society but you have the old the old way of thinking you have the new way of thinking you have the new wave the new wave the new generation who has specific ways of believing you know how things should be and then we have this um you know this new information being ushered in why information because mars and transiting through the sign of gemini gemini rules communication information sharing things that impact your pockets your wallet this could create huge swings upward or downward depending on um, you know, what, what's going on in your charts and how long have you been working with these planets? Are these planets beating you up or are you, have you been able to save? Are you, how, how's your career looking? How's your savings looking? Those types of stuff. So I just want to say that, and this is just one thing that just happened just today as Uranus just recently went retrograde. So, um, th we're, this is one thing that's going to happen or that just happened. We're going to continue to see these things unfolding especially when it comes to government politics businesses and stuff like that and and spending there's this huge idea too and i'm going to talk about politics first and government um and business there's this huge idea of about resources our our access to resources and trying to quote unquote fix those problems how do you do that when you're dealing with the issues that have been long happening like long overdue things that have been going on for ge generations and generations why generations and generations being put to right now because we have saturn retrograde uranus retrograde jupiter retrograde neptune retrograde all the major planets pluto retrograde all these major planets are retrograde right now bringing back and highlighting issues of the past or problems of the past and how do we go and fix it with new mindset way of thinking old mindset what a way of thinking both of those things fighting in order to try and create a solution good luck with that you know so just for you guys wondering you know what is what's gonna happen what is happening here it, it's not to make you scared or feel uncomfortable or unstable if anything astrology I know all about instability like I know all about life changing radically really quickly um, astrology has always been the sounding board for me to let me know okay this is why it's happening this is how long it's gonna last this is what I can expect so instead of me being like okay blindsided by these informations I can see what's happening within the chart so I'm not nervous about it I'm just like well right on time so that's exactly what it is that we're seeing here Uranus just went retrograde and with in the sign of Taurus of course it's gonna be talking about you know Taurus for those of you guys that don't know Taurus energy is directly opposite of Scorpio. Scorpio energy is all about loans, the things that we are due to, that we have to give to other people. So Uranus sitting directly opposite of um, Scorpio. Scorpio energy, we have verte the vertex point within that. There's this point of faded, faded encounters, faded things, faded events that get disrupted, that get triggered, and then we start to deal with them. But how that happens in our lives and our government and how that makes us feel you know it depends it depends on your chart it depends on how you've been building up your resources it depends on if this is going to be a relief for you or if this is going to create stress for you so the other thing that i want to talk to you guys about speaking of stress when it comes to your intimate relationships when it comes to yourself you guys when i'm talking when i tell you guys radical change the rat the, the, the radical the level of radical change that is happening within every single one of us you guys there's the breaking down of the old way or the old life or the old you and the building up of the new you and this uncomfortable in between area where you're trying to navigate who you were who you are now and who you want to be it's interesting because i was just having this conversation with one of my friends earlier um about envisioning your higher self and essentially kind of showing up as him or her right it's what ha what's happening here is your old way of life is actively being broken down again by these major planets and then when the new moon occurs this is a time if you're smart if you're wise or if you're watching this video now in order to set intention for your ritual your hygiene your routine for this is where this is what I need to do now in order to get me to where I'm getting, I'm being called or I'm being currently led. 
okay so what do you have to do at this moment in time is this i didn't even stop to see if this video is like focusing like have we been focusing on me the entire time i hope so sorry i just got a text message yeah um the, the thing is, is like let's say you're dealing with a 29 year old 30 a 30 year old 45 i mean it, it's it, you would think that these energies this has to do with more mature and like uh people right so they may have already lived their life for years this is just who i am i can't change blah 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 these transits right here guys it's either it's a spiritual awakening it's a kundalini awakening it's uh, some crazy event a death in the family a shock to the system is essentially what i'm saying that shifts your focus and your priorities in order to be like this is what is actually important to me now and now that this is important to me i have to change what i've been doing this is not something and i know a lot of you guys have been struggling with aspects within yourself or relationships around you where you're just like what is going on like you know it's like i'm putting in the work or is love enough or am i going to see the results or whatever the case is you have to understand that if you spent 20 years 30 years 40 50 60 90 years of your life living a certain way and you have transits like this that are shooting a lightning bolt into everything that was valuable to you and important to you and now you have to adjust accordingly in order to live a new life after what you've known and your comfort zone has rapidly been destroyed underneath your feet and you're just like okay this is new normal that is not something that a, a normal person a regular a well-adjusted human being or an unadjusted human being because like fuck like which one of us out here are completely healed at, <laughs> at this point right we're all you know the last the generations before us they could get away with murder right they they still have stigma against like talking about mental health and going to therapy but our generation you and i like the majority of us because i know my population i know who's who's watching my who's watching my my youtube videos right the majority of us are really interested in in healing ourselves and the generations before that are like well we don't talk about that you know that's a stigma i failed you and it's just like stop with the guilt go get healed you know but anyways so back to what i was saying that these types of awakening moments even though they're great even though they're good you can you'll be able to see the payoff not right now in the moment but years later down the line because there is a huge level of adjustment and reevaluation that a person has to come to terms with within themselves before they can actively start to accept it and make changes that are going to be healthy productive efficient and provide long-lasting happiness and prosperity and growth and all the above right all and then some so there is a, a wild level of grace that has to be given not only to yourself but to the people that are around you because as stubborn as these energies are right they are considered they're they are considering they are considering you know new ways of thinking you may not see it all the time. You may not hear it all the time. You may not, you know, see confirmation of it, but it is happening, right? And that's, if you can be patient with yourself, if you can be patient with your job, if you can be patient with your progress, your business or your relationship or whatever, your love life, you will see the results in this. But for now, at the time of the new moon, one thing that will help you is by focusing on what you can control right and and making sure that you are practicing doing a healthy practice that works for you and your own unique needs your own unique needs um i am seeing a, an emphasis on connecting with other people especially now that mercury is entering in the sign of libra um at the time of the new moon this is about connecting with others wanting to harmonize with others wanting to align with others I am seeing the thought being placed in people's head where they're starting to dissect things that they must say to others from the past or issues of the past that they might not have had the emotional or mental strength or maturity in order to deal with at the time. But I promise you, probably, probably around Mercury retrograde time is when you're going to start to see or hear information about that but the seed is being planted at the time of the new moon just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not there it doesn't mean it's not happening 
Um, when it comes to finances and money, because a lot of you guys have been struggling with that, I do see that things are going to be a little tight, especially at the time of the new moon. We're lucky for the most part that this isn't a full moon. <laughs> So you have time to continue to look for information and and resources and kind of tailor your resume or tailor your website or whatever it is that you need to do that you make money. These are things that you pay attention to those details. Now that I'm saying it out loud, I will heed this advice and make some adjustments to my own website because you guys know as a Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Mars, I'm always tweaking my, my process and trying to do the best that I can, but there's so many things going on and I like to be of service, so clearly things kind of slip through the cracks even as a Virgo but it is what it is we live we learn we do better I give myself grace <laughs> um, I'm under these transits just like you so you know we doing what we doing um, but yeah like what what do you need to do for you what needs to be adjusted what needs to be processed the same thing that I was also saying to my friend earlier is to be very very picky with the energies that you are taking on be very very selective with what you're manifesting and be very clear and detailed oriented and you will do just fine all right guys so I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the podcast so if you would like to check that out, um, go ahead and search Baha'i Life Podcast on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, all major major streaming podcasts. Baha'i Life is doing exceedingly well over there too. So I want to talk to you guys about this week. Um, and I also want to get this video up for you. So if you guys have any questions about this new moon, please let me know down below. I will be making a new moon oil, an intention oil for this new moon. So I will leave the link down so you can pre-order that. And also fixed candles will be available as well. Not a custom fixed candle for this new moon because I'm going to be spending so much time on the oils. But um, let's say you're setting intention for specific details that you've missed so far in your business, all those types of things, things to help you to be successful. If now, if there's going to be a time to work your magic, this is the time, okay? Because we are defying all logic. We are relying on our spiritual guidance, intuition, our magic, and manifesting abilities. That's what's going to make you successful. And I'm not saying that because I'm in the business of it or because I believe in it. It's because it's the truth. It's in the chart. All right, I'm sending you guys all my love and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. You were created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing, all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. Bahati Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria, where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you. You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahadiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahadiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.